So with Australian Open starting in a couple of days' time, we have to go through all the players that have the most to gain and the most to lose at this year's Australian Open in terms of ranking points. Because, of course, it's all about world rankings. And there's a lot of players that actually did really well here last year that we might have forgotten about who have a lot of points to defend. And a lot of players that actually didn't play last year or did poorly last year, they have a lot of points to gain. So let's start with the women. Starting with Jessica Bagula. She made the quarterfinals last year, eventually losing to Ash Barty. But she will have to defend 430 points of her ranking points. Luckily, she's very consistent throughout the seasons. In the semifinals, Igish Fiontech. She has 780 points to defend from last year's Australian Open. I think we all forget how well she did this time last year. Madison Keys also has to defend 780 points from the Australian Open semi-final last year. She lost to Ash Barty in the end. And Danielle Collins, the finalist from last year, has 1,300 points to defend. And that makes up a lot of her ranking. The players that have the most to gain on the WTA, Ons Burr. She's number two in the world currently and didn't actually play the Australian Open. So every match that she wins at the Australian Open is going to add to her total. Coco Goff, she actually lost in the first round of the Australian Open last year, only with 10 points to defend. So she's kind of like Jabir. No risk, can play for free. Caroline Garcia also lost in the first round. This time last year, she was actually 70 or so in the world. So she's number four currently. Got nothing to lose. And Belinda Bencic, who's in really good form at the moment, she only made a second round, which means she has to save 45 points from last year. So again, she has nothing to lose going into this Australian Open. Heading over to the men now and the players that have most to lose at this year's Australian Open ranking-wise, Matteo Berrettini. He made the semifinals last year, and he has 720 points to defend. And that's going to be tough because he does have very tough opponents in the first few rounds. Stevanos Sidzibas also has that same total, 720 points to defend after making the semifinals last year. So both those guys are going to have to do well, and both those guys have got tricky draws. The finalists from last year, Daniel Medvedev has a very tough draw, and he has to defend 1,200 points from last year's final. And he's in a very tough drawer, which includes the champion of last year, Rafa Nadal. Now, Rafa has the most to lose. 2,000 points, and he has probably one of the toughest draws, not just out of these four guys, but in the entire tournament. And it's going to be very tricky to, for Rafa to get those 2,000 points back. The players that have nothing to lose and everything to gain, Casper Ruud. He actually didn't play the Australian Open last year, which is crazy. It's kind of like Ons Jabeur for the ladies. He didn't play, so he has everything to gain. Novak Djokovic, uh, you know, this time last year, everyone was really upset by the fact that he couldn't play. Now he's playing for free, so it's almost like a blessing in disguise. Holger Runa, he actually only has 10 points to defend after making the first round last year and losing so early on, so he also can play for free. And Nick Kyrgios, only made the second round last year, lost to Daniel Medvedev, has 45 points to defend, and has a pretty good draw. So if he does make it to the fourth round or beyond, he'll be able to add to his total. So those are the ranking points to gain and to lose. And there are some massive names there that are playing without any risk because they didn't play last year or they didn't do well last year. But let me know down in the comments below. Who do you think will benefit from this the most? And who do you think will struggle the most? Do you think it's going to be Rafa losing a lot of points? Djokovic has everything to gain, of course. But let me know down in the comments below. Who do you think has the most to lose and the most to gain at this year's Australian Open?